just imagine for a moment, just imagine for a moment, that you're in the Museum of Latin America, of American Art in Long Beach, California. And most importantly, you have a budget of exactly $42,000. Let me say that again. You have a budget of $42,000. Your assignment is to create a community-based exhibit that impacts and engages the target community. The result is transformation. AOA recipient for museum exhibit on a limited budget. Transformation tells the stories of five Long Beach community members with riveting videos of personal transformation in the face of complex experiences. Displayed alongside are items from the Museum of Black American Art collection, selected by each of the storytellers to represent both the before and after of their story. We're pleased to introduce today the Museum of Black American Art Curator and Collector, Carla Zatika. And, and for all of you designers out there and all of the rest of us who are always just thinking about what name do we call our new company, we have with us Center of the Universe Media Producer, Alana Drazer. So, uh, welcome both of you. Carlos, I'm so to you. Thank you, Roberta, and thank you to the PEA for having us here today. And thank you for being here right now, since we this is the first session after I'm um, really excited to have this in the hotel. So, thank you. Um, the Museum of Latin American Art is located in Long Beach, California, which is 30 minutes away from Los Angeles, and it was founded in 1996 by a philanthropist called Dr. Robert Combiner who traveled to Latin America often and purchased art from artists that were well-known in the country of origin but completely unknown in the U.S. Our mission is to expand knowledge and appreciation of modern and contemporary Latin American art through collections, groundbreaking exhibitions, stimulating educational programs, and engaging cultural events. MOLA is the only museum in the entire U.S. that is exclusively dedicated to modern and Latin American art. We have a collection of over 2,000 works of art, representing over 20 countries in two continents. We have 15,000 square dining space and a wonderful sculpture garden where we do for all our special events. So when we sat down to create a permanent collection, we had very clear that we wanted to, to use four elements. The, we wanted to be a, a visual and emotional experience that was also educational, but most important, we wanted it to be inspirational. So, we have the permanent collection of the museum, and we have our community. And what we want is to grab the collection and take it to the community, often utilize it, and then bring it back to us. Uh, we have very clear that our target audience were low-income families with kids and people that have never set a foot in, in the museum before. So, we have three questions that we wanted to answer in this project. The first one is, how can we bring new visitors to Mona? How can we make guests relate to the experience? And how can we encourage interaction? What I would like to do next is show you a brief similar video of what we accomplished. It is a one-of-a-kind community exhibition in Long Beach. People are sharing their life-altering stories and by doing so, motivating others to transform their lives. Five people letting you into their private lives, an exhibit where people share their personal stories through art. This is not the story about a sad girl seeing herself as a victim. This is a life looking for all the beautiful things that life has manifested. Participants were asked to choose 10 art pieces that represent their stories before and after their lives were transformed. I'm a completely different person. I don't feel the same. I don't have the same body. I don't have the same mind. I don't have the same heart. I want to be able to share this so that it might inspire someone else. 
I am so overwhelmed by not only my own emotional experience to the exhibition, but the emotional experience I saw of others. I saw people come in contact with stories that brought them to artworks that they would have never been brought to before. And the connection of that personal story is what enlivened it. The people really react emotionally here. And in a way, they get permission to do that. It's OK to react to art with what I really feel, and that there are no right or wrong answers with art. People like stories. We like to share. You can also participate in this exhibit by choosing one of these necklaces with the image that best represents your story. Being able to pick a piece from the permanent collection behind you is super powerful. The foyer was set up as a living room where people were invited to share their personal experiences or to understand the, the experience more fully for themselves it was a very valuable gift that the museum gave the viewer. So let me go with you through the selection process really quick. Um, we created a questionnaire with basic questions like, what is your story? What would you like others to learn from your story? What is your relationship with us? And we send it to all the MOOC members and also to over 80 nonprofits that deal with social justice in Los Angeles and Orange County. And we received over 100 stories that were reviewed, and we narrowed it down to 10 interviews. And from those 10 interviews, we came out with or five participants. All their stories are stories that our audience can relate in one way or another. So we invited the participants to come to the museum to choose art to, to represent their emotions. And the collection was too large. So what I did is I asked the docents to choose 100 art pieces that they felt connected with and that they hadn't seen exhibited in a long time. And then I, I text to my interns and I asked them to choose another hundred art pieces of uh, art that represented general emotions of sadness, happiness, and so on. And then I myself sat down in, with the collection and I chose 50 art pieces that specifically related, or that I thought that specifically related to their stories. And from those 250 pieces, they got to choose them. And I asked them to not focus on the name of the artist, the country of origin, or the title of the piece. It was important that it would choose a visual connection between them and the art. So while we were going through the design phase, uh, we agreed that we were going to have a TV in, the, in each of the sections. Uh, the TV was going to be short videos of the participants telling you their own story. And to the left, we put all the pieces that they felt represented, you know, they, that, that represented how they felt before that life changing event. And then to the right, we put all the pieces that show how they feel now. And uh, while we were doing this, I asked the education department to jump on board. They have been involved in the project from the very beginning, but I asked them, just by looking at these pieces that Felicia chose, can you tell me by looking at the art why they chose these pieces? And they couldn't. So what we did is ask the participants to come back again, and from those selections that they made, I asked them to tell in one sentence why they chose each of the pieces. And this was the results. We had Willie. Willie uh, raised, was raised in El Paso, Texas. He, he lived in an oppressive family environment. He described his family as a tyrant. His way to go out and uh, break out of that was to join the Navy at the age of 17 and he started dealing with people from different backgrounds and ethnicities and it opened the whole world uh, to him. And when he chose this piece of Amalia Caputo from Venezuela, he was being allowed to reach out and experience something different. Or Lorena, she's a two-time breast cancer survivor and she chose this piece and she said, I carry the burden of cancer but I will build something positive out of it. Or Juan, who uh, was a Long Beach gang member who trafficked with drugs back and forth on the Mexican border. He got caught by the FBI 
and he spent 10 years in prison, and all his the work that he chose was very focused on family. And he said, teach your children, children well, or mistakes are their lessons. And sometimes we would, we would find very interesting cases like Rocio. Rocio was born in El Salvador at the age of eight. She was a victim of some gun violence. Uh, Lost will kick her spine, and she has been in a wheelchair since. And when she saw this kid sleeping, she interpreted as one dream transforms into other. Not knowing that the artist was the real artist, who is a colonial artist, who was depicting kids that had been murdered, victims of gun violence. Or Felisa. Felisa was another mother mother when she was 14. And she survived on the streets for two years until her aunt to rescue her. And uh, she said that this piece was the pillar of her experience. I see myself, I see my mother, I see generations of women surviving. This is a piece by Nelson Marino from Venezuela, and it's called The Assassination of Baby Jesus. So we have very clear that this has to be a ritual. Experience. So we partnered with Cotton Media, uh, the company that created the short videos that play in the exhibition. Um, I'm a car enthusiast. I have been following the uh, Cotton Media videos on YouTube for over seven years. At a time where people were doing automobile journey racing, focusing just on facts and specifications. Cotton Media was doing videos that were based on so I'm going to pass you to Ali Trepo, producer of Cotton Media. Thanks, Carlos. Glad to uh, bear with me. I'm used to being behind the scenes. Um, we make these videos. Um, we shoot a lot of automotive content before a car. Lexus, Volkswagen, Mazda. <laughs> Being interviewed by um, our professor director there, Mike Delano, and he's speaking with Juan after already spending many hours with him, and he's there in the uh, storage room at Mullen. And here's another participant, and that's my first shooting. So they got that, you know, that intimacy. That, um, that translated to those very emotional videos. And um, now we're going to watch uh, Rocio's video, and um, I hope that comes across.
this is not the story about a sad girl, like remembering the past and like seeing herself as a victim. This is a life looking for all the beautiful things that life has manifested. Just being alive, I'm really grateful to be alive. I was born in El Salvador. I used to like a lot of dance and my sister noticed and she helped me to get a, a scholarship for a ballet school. I was um, eight years old but I really like it and I remember I used to like it a lot. I didn't get to this school because two months later uh, I got shot. We were shot by gangs. Uh, I was with my dad and my brother. They wanted to stole our car. I got a, a spinal cord injury. Uh, I couldn't understand what, what was happen, happened to me. And for many years, I thought, oh, I'm going to be able to walk. This is only for a moment. Because I thought, I'm going to wait until I walk to continue my life. I spent many years like that. I read this thing about the, the Aztec calendar. It's supposed to be the end of the world, 2012, and everybody was waiting for that. So I was waiting, like, being in a wheelchair, it was the end of the war. I had a lot of problems to, to go to school because none of the schools uh, are accessible. Eventually, I found one, but it was really expensive. And I just stay at home and I saw all my friends going to the university. And then, um, my mom was living here and she applied for uh, my, my residence. And in that time I, I got my residence. One door was closed, but then another was open. I had a really bad scoliosis. The doctors decided that they had to do this surgery as soon as possible. While I was going to the hospital, they had a, a, an art program. And I started to take classes. And then at the end, they sent me home. They gave me some art supplies. I just stay at home and paint. And I think incorporating art as a therapy, that changed everything. I find like a, a purpose in my life. It was, yeah, it was a transformation. I really liked dance before. I think I discovered another way to dance. And uh, I dance with my brushes. Oh, a, a lot of people ask me, oh, how do you prefer be called handicap, special, or, but I think I just prefer to be called Rocio. Jr. and you can't read it very well, but it says 
dreams has no expiration date. You can now also invite different artists from different cultural backgrounds to paint paintings. And if he, he cut them in slices and intertwine them to create a metaphor of what we were looking to, to create in this space. So, on one side we have the videos and the art, and on the other side we have this space of intimate connections. And the way to, to reach the gap was through necklaces. We created necklaces in this space where you would go and you, we ask you to share your own transformation, grab the necklace with the image that best represents your story, wear it, and share your experience with another visitor. And these necklaces became the conversation starters among our, our visitors and also the emotional souvenir that they were allowed to take home and share the experience in the future. And the space was used by our audience and by our visitors, but it was also used by school visitors, by, by the school tours. And we have kids coming over and sharing at an early age, you know, emotional and deep, um, deep um, stories and open up. Um, and we were even used by the staff of the museum. This is right before opening the doors, where you see the security staff. It became a hub of uh, social interaction. So the results of the project were um, amazing. We have the largest permanent collection exhibition in the history of the institution, and it was all through word of mouth. We usually have um, one or two comments on, on our textbook. Uh, where people would complain about the high prices of the store, or the eeriness of the restaurants, and suddenly we were inundated and bombarded with hundreds of positive comments. Amazing, extraordinary, so touching and informative, so delightful. I feel so enriched by every level of artistic and the video, photography, selection of art, or this one. Lots of the extended content of the permanent collection represents what art should be about. Or this other one, I came today feeling very anxious after a difficult day at work. Simply spending half an hour here has given me back my calmness and my smile. And my favorite of all the quotes is the greatest exhibit of my life, any museum for that matter, what I saw in the film collection. Want more exhibits just for the transformations. And the last transformation that took place in this exhibition was actually a stop transformation. The staff was transformed in the way we worked together. And from the beginning, I made sure that every staff member was involved in the exhibition process, including those that usually don't get the chance to go. So what happened is that people were invested in the project and in the success of it. And something that had never happened in the museum took place is that heads of different departments voluntarily provided um, money from the, the department, departmental budget to contribute with the success of this show. Thank you very much. We have time for questions. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't want to think about it. 
I think that uh, Carlos is kind of a ball in the same kind of way. <laughs> and we have been looking for something to do to serve our community. We, we love Long Beach, and um, this is just the perfect fit. Came along with the perfect time. Go to was a company that understood what emotional engagement is all about. And we were, I, mean, I was looking for someone who could create that, you know, intimate environment so we could have these people tell these really deep personal stories. You know, it's, it's very hard to, to capture this. So. Maybe if we could go back to one of the slides where I show the, the TV screen and the descriptions to each of them. That showed all the pieces that were before the I I I live pretty really open to the participants. I, I didn't want to influence them in any way. So when the pieces were presented to them, they, they had completely freedom to choose you know, the pieces that were associated with the first before. And in fact, it, it, they put it very clear, you know, when you don't have any other um, attachments, it's like, just visually, just look at what calls you and what relates to this story that you want to tell. It becomes really easy for them, you know. From Rocio, who actually showed in hundred pieces from all of them, and she was going to like, oh, like this one, like this one. Up to Juan, who, who was, you know, struggling to find the representation of his life that, you know, would show how he was feeling before going into prison, you know, how he was feeling like a rock star, he had all the money in the world, everybody's attention, and suddenly the transformation that took place when his kids were coming to visit him and he was missing, you know, all, everything in their life. And, you know, that was the transformation. And then he reflected it in choosing art that had to do with how, um, you know, with how, you know, family oriented artwork. He keeps himself to this. Without the family, he would never have been able to make it. I really loved what you did for the concept of the discussion room after the exhibit. And I was wondering, was it a really big risk? And I was suggesting having a room where students talk to each other and try to discuss what the content is going to be. Because I know a lot of museums, like, 
Thank you very much. Well done. 